don't do it, don't do it. You'll regret it. You'll instantly regret that. Hello, beautifuls. Welcome back to my Chanel. There is a lot of biscuit fluff in the studio here today, my lovelies. And welcome back to another episode of Unhinged Beauty TikTok, my lovely. Unhinged, deranged, completely insane. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. A series in which here on the Chanel, my lovelies, we react to some of the most unhinged TikToks available over on TikTok. <laughs> what a surprise. Oh, isn't she quirky? If this is your first video here on the Chanel, my name is Luxaria and I have been a makeup artist since 2007. Isn't that awful? How hateful. I also have a first class biochemistry degree because I have a fundamental interest in the way things work. And here in this series, here on the Chanel, my lovelies, I like to use a little bit of science and a little bit of my makeup artistry knowledge to try and understand maybe why some of these hacks do work, don't work, or why they're completely deranged. The rumors are true. She does in fact have a B-Tech. If you would like to tag me in any of the unhinged nonsense you see over on TikTok, it is area. Feel free to go and give me a little follow over there. I do occasionally post over there. I'm not a TikTok queen quite yet, but I do post travel and fashion nonsense over there. Oh, today is the first day that I feel like I've recovered from the plague. Isn't it nice? Gosh, don't you just miss the times when you can't breathe out of one nostril and you're just like, oh, I lament the time in which I could breathe through both nostrils. She's dead. Oh, those were the days, weren't they? The golden age. Grab yourself a beverage. I'm once again on the caffeinated beverages here today. Pop your little ohringa right into your little TikTok hole and let's watch some unhinged beauty TikToks, shall we, my loves? What is this? Volume 12? Yes. Don't bother. Oh dear, we're starting strong here today, my lovelies. Okay. Oh my god, I'm crying. And I do, in fact, see something that might happen in this TikTok. I'm just gonna say it, my loves. I'm just gonna say it. How many of us have found ourselves in this situation? I don't know. Something's happened in our lives. We go, oh, it's very stressful. Do you know what it's time for? It's time for me to cut my own bangs. No! No, God, please, no! This, it's not for you. It's not for you, sis. I don't know who needs to tell you. It's not for you. Maybe one in every hundred people who cut their own fringe is perhaps it's for them. It's not for you. Oh, uh, it's not for us. Also, it looks like she kind of has very curly textured hair. So, let's see. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna hold my horses. Let's watch. Oh, is this copyright music, maybe? Oh. <gasps> oh, that's really high, no. Oh. Oh, no, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. You'll regret it. You'll instantly regret that. No. <gasps> oh, no. And what do you do then? You just carry on with your day with this new fringe. Oh, no. What did I just say? What did I just say? It's not for you. We've all been there, but it's not for you. <laughs> oh, how can you even begin to fix something like this? So I don't know if you know, but I was a hairdresser for a very short time in my life from around 16 to 17 years old, I want to say. I actually fell in love with hair color and hair bleach during that time. And that's why now I do all my own hair and beauty things. So. First of all, if you're gonna try and trim your own fringe or trim your own face framing layers, something like that, always start longer than you think. Try not to tie things up quite so tightly. Always start and then cut off more because when you find yourself in this situation, what can she do here? This is so short. She's got such curly volume that she cut it here, but it actually pulled it all the way up to here. And that's gonna take what? Months to fix itself. Unless she perhaps wants to wear one of those nice like hair bands that pushes everything back. Maybe disguising the crime that's been committed. So my lovelies, no. Do you know what? No. Let me know in the comments here if you are a hairdresser, how many times someone has come into your salon wearing a hat and going, don't look at me, don't look at me, sat in your chair and then gone, look what I did. And you go, oh God. <laughs> how many times has that happened, my lovelies? Let me know. No, there's no biochemistry here that will help you. Right, what's next on the agenda? Oh, a green screen from what's this? Runway relapse. Do we agree with that? I'm not sure we do. Right, let's watch. Oh, the Maso Margelli artisanal collection. Oh my God, the, I, I, swear, I have to pause. This has taken the entire internet by storm because it should do. Any makeup artist in the world at any moment at this time in existence has been completely obsessed 
with the Maison Margiela makeup style that was recently seen in Fashion Week. Everyone is like, oh my God. I'm going to cream. Gagged, gagged, gooped. We've seen people talking about the products that Pat McGrath used to try and create the glass skin. We've seen people theorizing what's available. We've seen people question whether it's actually a, an unreleased product that's coming to the market at any moment. Quickly buy it, it's out of stock. And you know what? It's fully captured me as well. Should we, should we admire the beauty, shall we? It's not very often that we get to see some unhinged beauty TikTok that's actually completely deranged in the best possible way. Who would have thought? Matching the skin to a plastic latex textured garment. Also, this lady is gorgeous. I know that she's also in Game of Thrones. Her name escapes me immediately. Gwendolyn, it's Gwendolyn something, isn't it? It did just say it, it's completely gone. Ah, oh, selling the fantasy, fashion is back. The industry is saved, the crops are watered. Ah, oh, imagine, imagine, imagine. I do think this music might be copyrighted, so we are going to turn that down slightly. Not looking to get cancelled here on the Chanel, no. Ah, oh, endless pride, I don't think. Are you homosexual? Breathtaking, isn't it? Phenomenal. The techniques, the skills. How do you even begin to build a garment like that? Yes, bitch. You better saunter that runway. Look at the ringlets. Oh, the texture of the skin. Even the actual, like, Rococo chic inspired actual base makeup is incredible. I love a bright yellow cheek. Oh, snatched at the back. Business at the front and snatched at the back. Oh, yes, every day. Did you love that? Should we all clap? Yes, queen. I loved that. Absolutely loved that. Well, runway relapse. Thank you so much. Yes. Right, taking it back to something completely different. This is a... Oh, are we going to have a skincare moment here? Let's have it. Oh, this is three and a half minutes long. I don't know if we watched the whole video by SF Princess, but we shall see. So I recently tried a new skincare and this is what happened. Oh, no. So I'm going to show you guys how to cover it up. I'm really hoping <laughs> that my skin heals quickly because this is how my skin usually is like this is no beauty filter Lovely. no nothing like Lovely it's usually skin. pretty oh, like clear no well. i don't know what happened over here <laughs> but let's just let me just show you how i cover it okay i'm just gonna start by using any type of a poreless primer just so that it can smooth out my skin and none of the texture will show as much do you know, I think for something like this, actually, perhaps the beautiful Marcel Magella makeup would be great for creating a barrier between your skin and makeup in this specific kind of an instance. I do want to say, though, a lot of makeup artists out here, myself included, if you're working on a counter or, or doing freelance or anything like that, anyone will say if you're having this much of a bad reaction to something, do not put makeup on your skin. Do not put makeup that's perhaps using unwashed brushes or sponges or powder or texture or anything like that onto fresh open wounds on the face. However, I do also know that people are gonna do that because do you know what? Because you're having a reaction to something, the world doesn't stop. You might still need to put on glam to go to your job. You might still need to put on glam to do X, Y, or Z. Like, you know, the world doesn't stop, you know? Best thing that you can do in this sort of a situation is to make sure that all of your tools are clean and sanitized so they do not cause further problems and create a barrier between the areas that are a problem and the makeup you're gonna put on top of them. So that's using specific skincare infused primers, perhaps even avoiding those areas whatsoever and just using some of those blemish patches. Although make sure that the blemish patches themselves aren't gonna cause you problems by being put into technically like a sore, technically like a skin sore, but let's keep watching. I think by spa concealing are uh, the areas with the most pigmentation on them. Spot concealing, Y'all know great, when yes. your face just hurts, like it's burnt and it just hurts to even touch? That's where I'm at right now. Oh, you So if anybody thing, knows fun, of anything it? to put on my face to help it heal faster, please, please let me know. I have been trying a bunch of different things to help my skin. Okay, so if this anything is a full works, coverage glam. I'll make sure to let you guys know because honestly, this has never happened. And I'm just hoping it doesn't scar. I wonder what the... For contour, I'm using the Too Faced Born This Way in the shade Chestnut. See, oh, this is kind of a bit underpainting. This is kind of a little bit what I do. In, Maybe not quite so full coverage. Um, concealer in Almond. I'm going to be going on a trip in the next month. And I'm super excited. 
I feel like the two most asked questions ever on my makeup when people see me one in person or online is one how do you get your face to look like a porcelain doll like just Ooh. your skin to look so smooth and the second one is always like what is your nose contour like technique and this is drag contour. <laughs> this is drag nose contour. That's exactly what this is. And that's not bad in the slightest. Not a bad technique. Makeup is all about creating illusions. I am, however, going to say that if you have textured skin, makeup is never, 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 never going to completely cover that. It might look great in videos, great in photos, especially uploaded to something like TikTok, where the quality of the upload affects like how the skin looks. TikTok even has like advanced beauty filters even built into the app. Sometimes you have to turn them off if you want to upload a video without that happening. But in more professional video environments, such as what I'm filming with now, like you can see my skin texture and I will never ever completely hide that. And I actually quite like the fact that you can kind of see that because it does in fact make me look more human. There is no makeup out there currently, well maybe the Mars Margiela mask might, that can mask texture. You will always still be able to see texture. Makeup looks like makeup when it's on the skin. Routine. I I love that brush. I think that's a nice brush, you want your nose to look like you have a filter on, like you just got a nose job. I would have maybe this not used quite such a large brush. This is the secret to it. Oh, and this too. To I use this one for Physicians Formula. Oh no, um, I, I, didn't, I didn't appreciate I like anything, this. No, silver. I didn't. I didn't really. Blush. I just no. discovered this blush. This is the Fire Clay from Menards, and you guys, this is the prettiest oh, blush. That is very I nice. love it. Kiss. I've been so obsessed with it. I use it every single time I do my makeup. It's legit the perfect pink. Oh, well, there we go. That's how apparently she does her makeup. I'm going to say from a professional makeup artist's point of view, if you can take the time away from wearing cosmetics after having a bad skin reaction to a product, then do so because your skin needs to have time to heal. But that was a nice pretty blush at the end there, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, another green screen. What's this? Jodi Neal, 22. I got first a Oh, green hang on. Wait a second. She's far too loud. Voluminous. Right, I also did here. I've got first degree burns, so let's see. I got first degree burns from Paula's Choice Exfoliant. Why? Can My you have? skin before. Lovely skin. Mm, very good. My skin a month after using the product twice daily for five days. Ooh. Please don't follow the bottle instructions like I did. I reached out to PC who said they would look into changing the bottle instructions and Phil Unique gave me a voucher. Refund. <gasps> oh my so goodness. So far I've spent over 100 pounds on dermatology and prescriptions. I just want my skin healthy again. Oh no, oh no, oh dear. Okay, so what she's used here is the 2% BHA liquid exfoliant. It's salicylic acid. So I'm a huge fan of salicylic acid based skincare, especially for actually targeting problem areas of the skin. I've been a huge fan of salicylic acid forever, but I am gonna say there does seem to be uh, movement in the regulation world, should we say, about ingredients that are active in cosmetics and skincare. The reason why I say this is because the European Union recently banned any use of retinol over 0.3% in products for the face. And I do sort of agree with that because an average consumer is gonna read what they say on the bottle and just follow that. Because skincare is not really associated with like doctor's orders, so to speak. Like you can go into a drugstore and an assistant there who's perhaps just a product assistant will be able to say, oh, use this, use this however you want, yeah. Why don't you try on that lovely wig? And they're not technically like licensed dermatologists. So, when it comes to something like salicylic acid, how does it work? Why is it working on the skin? Why do we love it? So salicylic acid is a BHA, which stands for beta hydroxy acid. And that is meant to help promote the skin's natural exfoliation process. It's actually a metabolite of aspirin. So back in the day, people used to crush up aspirin tablets and put them on their face and be like, oh my God, radiance. And while nowadays salicylic acid is synthesized in laboratories, it was actually found in willow bark. Again, 
again, going back to the little point I just mentioned about aspirin, back in the good old days, the medieval times, people would chew on willow bark to alleviate pain. Hence, aspirin painkiller. Is that amazing? Oh my god, amazing. Isn't science great? So the way that it works on the skin as a topical treatment is salicylic acid will actually penetrate into a pore and literally just like scrape out all of the muck and gloop and dead skin cells, oil build up, all the sorts of like gloopy, awful nonsense. And because of its ability to penetrate a pore itself, it actually has the ability to reduce sebum production and help prevent further clogging of that pore. It also has anti-inflammatory properties such as redness reduction. There is data to suggest that it might reduce fine lines and wrinkles. However, I would say that, oh, I don't know. I feel like I've used salicylic acid for nearly all of my adult life and I wouldn't say it's reduced fine lines and wrinkles. I would say there are probably things that are better out there for that. But because of its exfoliating process, they can put that on the bottle of like, oh yes, it reduces fine lines and wrinkles. I actually think that's just hydrating the skin. I'm sure another biochemist could quite easily chime in in the comments if they want to. Let me know their opinions. Oh, don't bother. It is really sad to see someone have such a severe reaction to something like this, but I would never use 2% salicylic acid on my skin twice daily. That is a lot to put it through. In fact, actually, I would probably say 2% every other day. It's probably more than fine for a lot of people. This is where, like, problems between skincare and should we say business, get into place here because obviously a company that's selling you a product wants you to use up that product. She's got a point. And ideally they want you to use it up in like a sensible amount of time so that you have to rebuy it every 30 days, let's say. That method of product development and product advertising is not going to take into account that that's not going to work for everyone. But what I am glad about here in this specific instance is that Paula's Choice did in fact listen to Jodi when she reached out and offered some kind of support. I'm not sure how I would feel about getting a voucher being like, oh, come buy more of our skincare after I've had a reaction to your skincare, I probably would be like, no. But I want to absolutely spread the message that when you buy these products, if they are not prescription and they are not given to you by a dermatologist or someone with an actual qualification in medicine, you are just following the guidelines on the bottle. And the guidelines on the bottle are written technically by a marketing department. Always, always, always exercise caution when trying a new product. And I would in fact even go further to say, try your new products nowhere near as frequently as they say on the bottle at first in in order to see how your skin reacts to it. The skin on the face is generally just a little bit more sensitive than skin elsewhere on the body. Like I probably wouldn't have a reaction to something if I was to mark it here, but if I was to put it under my eye up here, I might have a reaction to that same strength, depending on the active ingredient, of course. So yes, my loves, always exercise caution, but I'm really sorry that happened. That's so rubbish, isn't it? Oh, why is the skin, do you know what? Today, no. Shut your pie just now. <laughs> Allergic to duo lash glue? Oh. If you're allergic to latex, don't push it in your eyes. Hi guys, I'm in the process of getting ready, but the next step is my lashes. Lashes. And I've seen a lot on TikTok about the dual lash giving you like an allergic reaction. Oh! Making your eyes itchy, itchy scratchy, and scratchy, and like waking up with like sore um, eyes. So like that happened to me. Okay. Like I just kept using it. Like I didn't care because like I literally have no eyelashes. So like a day with lashes is like not a good day for me so i was reading the comments on this girl because she said she was allergic to them as well yes like lashes yes and i seen a comment that said the velour lash glue velour lash was glue. good and you can get on amazon Ooh. it's like around eight dollars yes. kind of like not bad price oh i want okay, to get the in that then lashes here are my lashes that i'm using for today so i never really had a problem with using dual glue i mean i used it for like about two years already and it was just such a good glue like to be honest but like oh, i'm but not gonna I don't agree know. there she did just say that she started having problems with it so that does contradict a little bit but that's fine that's fine sometimes people just started do started making my eyes itch and like making my eyes really crusty okay so i crusty, cut my and eyelashes you don't want crusty eyes no then, not with lashes if you have the same problem as me you know that when you apply it like your eyes just burn so badly but you just deal with it because no lash day is not a good day. No, no, lash glue when you apply it to the eye should absolutely not burn. If your eyes are burning when you put a cosmetic product on them, there is a problem and you should immediately remove that from your makeup routine. Okay, so I usually apply my lash glue, I let it dry for a bit yes. and I bend them a little. 
Yes, if you give it a little okay, bend, give it a little wave. Is tacky, I'm gonna apply it. Don't blow on it because that's unhygienic. I would have done mascara first. Okay, so I didn't. I have it on and it didn't burn, which is a good sign. Yes. But we'll see how it goes throughout the day. Oh, I'm are we gonna get a check in. Oh, I love okay, makeup I with a before, check in. This is a latex free eyelash glue. So uh -huh. if you're interested in that, I'll try to leave a link. And it is called the Velour Eyelash Glue. Okay. And if you guys are curious what dual lash glue I would use, it was the green one. The green dual lash glue. What's the green so one? So off the bat, Gosh, I, I do have a complaint. It doesn't stick on like as like right away and like good like as the dual lash glue. It just takes a little while to like wiggle it and set it in place. That's my only complaint so far. Okay. I will be giving an honest updated, review. See how it works out for me. And if you guys want to try out it yourself, I'm not sure if they have it on stores. We'll keep you guys updated on the eyelash glue if any of you guys have a problem. Yes. Or if you're not willing to try it just yet and see if it works out for me. Does it? Okay. Oh, here she I is. Look crazy, but I don't think you look crazy. These are the lashes. Oh, they are on. After I last put them on. And. They did not irritate me, and I'll see in the morning if they do irritate me, and I'll keep morning. trying the lash glue, see if it does start itching me. We're not wearing eyelashes in our sleep. So, good so far. Well, that's the end of that. Again, if you are having a reaction to anything you're putting on your eye, which is claimed to be a cosmetic, and it starts burning, do not. Do not continue using that product. Just don't. So the Velour Lash Glue. Let's look that up, shall we? Velour Beauty. It is a latex-free eyelash glue with a precision brush applicator that makes application mess-free. It is white adhesive glue that dries clear and is microbial approved for safe use on the eyes and hypoallergenic. What is the ingredients? Acrylate, so it's a plastic acrylate copolymer, water phenoxyethanol, that's phenoxyethanol is a great uh, preservative. Ethyl hexylglycerin, I'm not sure. It could be something with a moisturizing factor because that's usually what glycerin is. Or it could just be a fact to keep the product like gloopy. Sounds like a really straightforward, simple product and a great answer. So the lady in this TikTok did in fact mention that sometimes the glue takes a little bit of time to dry or to really get tacky. If you have a latex free glue that's not performing as good as you would like it to, shall we say. After you've applied it to the lash band, position it to where exactly you want it on your eye. Do a little print off and then remove the lash and it should leave a tiny bit of glue residue where you want to put your lashes. Reapply another layer of glue to the lash band and wait for that to go tacky whilst the glue on your eyelid is going tacky and then when you place them together, they have so much stronger grip that those eyelashes are not going anywhere. This is a technique that I used to sometimes use during weddings or days where people are gonna be emotional, they're gonna be wearing lashes for a long time, like, oh. I don't necessarily recommend it for an everyday use, but it is a technique that beats when eyelashes are like, do you know what? I'm gonna start peeling off. Oh, I don't like this bit of skin actually. I'm not gonna stick by. <laughs> it defeats that, completely leaves it in the dust. Right, what do we have here? Oh, okay, right, oh, lip filler hack. Okay, everybody, have we reached this part of the video? Okay, time for the injectables. All my lip filler girlies, I have lip filler in my top lip and I've had it for about a year now. Yes. But the way I keep it, like, I guess maintained and so I don't have to go get more, they go like good. And no. I massage the filler back into my lips. Okay, and then I just do that around my entire lip. Okay, after like what, 30 seconds? It literally looks like I got my lips redone. No, that's swelling, sis. Stop that's on swelling. It. I don't even, like, I'm, I, re I, really I really need to pause here. I really need to pause here. I really need to pause here. So, um, is this technically bad for you? Probably not. Is the effect that you're feeling going to be permanent? Probably not because the body does in fact actually break down lip filler over time, especially if you have something like hyaluronic acid. Every filler practitioner that I have been to after injecting my lips with filler has given them a soft massage to be into place. I have only ever, 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 ever been advised to continually massage after the first few days if there is granulation, which there shouldn't really be because if you go to a really good person, they're not gonna give you granulation. I do not think for a split second that you can massage filler back into an area once it's like bonded and set within the tissues. It's almost akin to saying something like, oh my goodness, well if I put filler here, up here, after a while on my arm, I could just massage the filler down 
to hear. Now, by saying this, I'm not saying that filler migration isn't real, because it is, but filler migration is caused by the general softening and breakdown of the tissues over time. I don't know, you know how swelling kind of creeps up over time and then goes down over time again? It's a similar sort of mechanism to that. Not exactly the same, but similar. The effect that you are feeling from massaging your lips like this is temporary swelling. Whenever something is being massaged on your body, your body does undergo a reaction of like, oh, something's happening in this area quickly. Should we put some fluids and some good things in this area just in case? And obviously, depending on how much of a like trauma this massage is causing, will depend how much fluid is going to that area. I will, however, open this up to the floor. I'm very interested in other people's experiences with filler. Like, would you say that massaging filler back into your lips is a way of extending the life of filler? Because I actually would see it almost as breaking down the filler extra if you were to keep doing that. Actually, like, agitating the very finest edges of the filler may cause further breakdown faster. Hmm. I'm not a practitioner or an aesthetician or anything of the sort. That's just what I would hazard an educated guess for. Interesting. Interesting. Cancelled! Oh, we've got, we've got the tape out. What's gonna happen with the tape? Sounds pretty nice. So I'm using a tape to lift the tip and slip my nose bridge, and I know the results won't be as drastic. So, fact or cap? I'm sorry, I I Dr. Roger Tsai. Sorry, my lovely. I just want to watch this. Is, is she going to lift the tip with tape? I don't think, like, tape, what, none of this is permanent. None of the things that we see, these little hacks where it's like, oh, if you tape it this way, that's not permanent. Otherwise, face tapes would give you a facelift forever. Must be the last one the season. <laughs> I want to hear about what Dr. Roger says about this. The tip and slim my nose bridge, and I know the results won't be as drastic. So, fact or cap? Unfortunately, this is cap. Of course. It might work for a short period of time, yes. a couple of hours, or maybe even a night out. Yes. But when you wake up the next day, yes. it's all gonna go back to normal. Just like wearing a waist trainer, it might help for a short period of time, but once you take it off, it all goes back. Yeah, well, exactly that, exactly wig tea. The thing with things like TikTok and being able to share such fast information is that the algorithm, these like magical little things behind the scene, favor more dramatic content. So if you titled this video such as, I gave myself a nose job with tape, that's gonna do infinitely better in the algorithm and increase your reach to a new audience or an even bigger audience. So it might even cause some content creators to be like, oh yeah, no, this is almost permanent for me because there is more investment in saying something as profound as that in a short form content TikTok than it would be to create content for YouTube or something to say like, my entire day documenting the use of tape for a nose job, does it work? I know it's something that a lot of people don't want to hear and I know it's something that's also a little bit like, uh, frustrating, should we say? It's a little bit frustrating, but none of these results are ever going to be permanent unless you go for permanent options such as surgery or injectables. And even most injectables are not permanent. Also, injectables will not slim a nose down. I've got a bucket of piss, sweetie. Oh, what's this one? Okay, Christian, uh, free blue face, free my daddy, I love you, papa. Christian Rock shows off her new blue face tattoo. <laughs> Oh, oh, hang on, wait, what? That, wait, 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 that was fast, that was fast. <gasps> Do I have to say here on the Chanel? I don't think I have to say this, but I'm just gonna say it anyway. Don't get someone else's face tattooed onto your face. Now, I actually recognize these names. Uh, Chrissy and Rock shows off her new blue face tattoo. I recognize some of these names. I am in no way, I don't really know who they are. I don't really know anything about them, but I know that on Reddit there is conversations of like, um, a negative relationship, should we say. All right, what does Yolando say? Right, she's got some beautiful face artwork. See, that's gorgeous. <gasps> Look at that full coverage woman! What's this? What is this? Is this... Is this a full coverage... Is this an advert for full coverage foundation? Oh, I kind of... Oh, very fierce, if so. Got a problem? Cover it up, girl. Oh, I love it. Oh, that is... Some I got you, Christina. I dream got you, coverage. Got you, I got you. Can be Evanes, Soft Night Concealer. We got you. Soft Night right? Concealer. That is incredible. I want to try that product. What is that? Sorry, we've just seen an absolute masterclass in social media advertising right there. We've just seen an absolute masterclass. You take something that's perhaps getting a lot of drama, a lot of attention, a lot of like clickbait, ragebait headlines, and you just simply show a product fixing the issue. 
quietly by yourself, almost like a, and there you go. Love that. That is social media expertise happening right there. Love that. Love that. Love everything about it. I need to find out more about this product. Beautiful shade match as well. On the ball. Is it her own makeup line? I think it might be. I'm gonna have to do some research into this afterwards. I love a full coverage. Absolute full coverage foundation option. Back in the day, you only used to be able to get like absolute full coverage foundations from brands like Cryolan or from even Mac Pro. They had their full coverage foundation, which I absolutely loved. And in fact, back in the day, it was the only shade that matched me. W10, so pale. Nowadays, I've actually embraced my skin's ability to actually be a human color and not just purely spectral. <laughs> One of the other like extreme tattoo coverage foundations that went viral relatively recently, it's probably about 10 years ago now, isn't it? Oh, is the Dermacol full coverage foundation in their like, it's in like a metal squeezy tube. That is an incredible product. And you can also get more specialist items as well, such as Derma Cover, I believe. This TikTok was posted three days ago and I'll be very interested to see more of this product. Soft Night Concealer, <gasps> scandalous. Right, okay, hang on. Okay, this might not necessarily be something to do with beauty, but if you don't know, my loves, in the UK, Rishi Sunak and the uh, general in the army has started throwing around things saying we should bring back national conscription and Gen Z is creating the most incredible content in reaction to that because who wants to fight for this awful country? Not me, I'm not being drafted, no thank you. Right, just Sam Morris. Give us some wisdom. Me after seeing my bestie in prison after we refused to be drafted by the war. Right. Oh, you are no say. <laughs> oh, you are no say. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Did you just get here? Babe, it is fucking crazy back there. Have you seen it? It's like fucking fashion week. They've run out of boiler suits. I already had one from COS, so I just I just brought that up. <gasps> no this, say. I feel like it's going to be kind of lit in here, no? Not I, lit. I feel like it's going to be... I feel like it's going to be the vibe in here. Like, I feel like it's going to be a hoot. They, I spoke to the one of the guards, and they said that they've linked up the... Um, they've linked up the TV to WoW, so we can stream new drag race in here. Oh, what could you imagine? Could you imagine? Could you imagine? And to watch the rest of this TikTok, my lovely, jump on over to Just Sam Morris over on TikTok. I am not going to be conscripted for this country. That is not happening. Excuse me. I will not have that. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Right. Okay. Back to some cosmetics. What do we have here? Alison Knight. Oh, how to apply highlighter. Oh, is it going to be a hack or is it just going to be like, this is how you do it? Should we have some educational content for a moment, shall we? Apply highlighter to capture your best lighting at all times. Capture I'm be your using my best favorite highlighter. lighting. This is the Jaclyn Cosmetics highlighter. In Dead eyes. now. <laughs> and I'm actually using a fluffy eyeshadow blending brush. This yes. is from BH Cosmetics. So I pick up literally oh, the slightest bit, of BH. bit and just place it on the tops of your cheekbones. And I like to go a little bit under the brow as well. On the tip of the nose. For two yes. spots, you would Oh, I do feel like this is copyright right music. Right here. Above oh, yes. Brow. Okay, a little bit above and the brow. Under chin, chin, chin. Yeah, no matter where the light is hitting you, you are gonna be glowing, girl. You like have a beauty filter tips. on. Thank you very much. Mm, I will say yeah, that, no yes, I do... Oh, more flattering angle, there we go. I do love the idea of wearing highlighter in more than one place on the face. Here, a little bit under the brows, etc. Personally, I am not a huge fan of wearing non-liquid highlighters in areas like the forehead or the chin. And the reason why is because sometimes powdered highlighters can add in texture or they have that kind of like vague glitter in them. And sometimes a glittery chin is not the tea. How dare you? But I will say these are the generally, 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 the most flattering places to place highlighter on the face. Again, it's gonna be slightly different for every single person. So when you hear someone say something like across the cheekbones, you have to decide where that's going to be for the kind of finish and the kind of face shape that you want to go for in the end. Do you want to enhance your natural face shape or do you perhaps want to give that little bit of like a shape-shifting illusion that your cheekbones are sharper or some such? I actually prefer to use a foundation brush to apply my highlighter. A fluffy foundation brush and not like a flat one. And I will use this brush whilst tilting my head down and just like pull like this naturally where the sun would hit on my high planes of my face. So maybe not quite that dramatic actually. <laughs> 
<laughs> I try and keep it on the outer parts of my face and then apply my contour just underneath my cheekbones so that I can create that point, like pointed cheekbones. But softly brushing over the skin rather than going backwards and forwards like this is gonna give you that high impact but also soft focus at the edges of where you've placed that highlighter. So yes, I love a bit of highlighter. Oh my goodness, it just brings life back to the face, doesn't it? If, however, you have a highlighter that is just doing the most, just doing too much for you, pop a little bit of loose powder over the top and you will instantly see it a lot more seamless with the skin. I knew it! Oh, my lovelies, okay, right, we've got a lip lining one right now, my lovelies. You're overlining your lips the wrong way, am I? Oh. Please do tell me how. Right, oh, there's no audio on this one. Okay, so I was just like, little sing song, put it around your lips. That's too much. Oh, why has she been, is she not allowed to speak? Okay, this is doing too much. You are not allowed to do all that. That is not the right way. Do it like this. Okay, so leave the sides alone. Go up into the middle. Do a little cross. Yes, this is great, love this. And join it over if you want that more fuller. Yes, agree there. Yes, yes, yes. Now what you need to do is put it in the bin. The bins! Go, yes, follow the edge, but don't overline the edge. Yes, I would agree, if you want a flattering outcome anyway. Overlining the center creates a fuller illusion. Wig tea. Uh, and, then, and then the bottom part, yes. You want the center. Oh, I wish I knew what she was saying. And then you're gonna do, do it up like, like this. And then around like that and join them together. Yes, yes, yes. I completely agree, pause. Yes, I agree. That is so much more of a flattering shape that's a lot more in the realms of neutral and natural than extending anything going from the outside of your face. Of course, if you're doing things like more fun makeup or more sort of like avant-garde looks or drag looks or whatever, do whatever you want with like the sides of your lip. Do whatever you want. If you want to increase the natural size of your lips and make them look more fuller and more eye-catching, always concentrate that overlining in the center of the top and the bottom and it gives you that more pouty look rather than like just a full-on single shape lip. Well, my lovelies, oh, I love that. Yes, 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 well done. That was quite an interesting development today, wasn't it? And a little interesting deep dive. Well, maybe not that deep, more like a shallow saunter. Into the world of unhinged beauty TikToks, I will forever love that Merson Margelier makeup look. It just is so iconic. Pat McGrath really blew it out the park, didn't she? Out the park. Great. However, I am gonna tell you again, do not try and cut a fringe at home because you're just not gonna like it. Don't cut your own bangs. It's not for you. You're not gonna like it. And with that, my lovelies, it's time for the Patreons. You can see yourselves scrolling past on the screen right here. Yes, you can. Today's Instagram shout out goes to Circus Doll 28 Thank you so much for following me over on Instagram, you stunning woman on the go. If you wanna be in with a chance of being featured in my next video's Instagram shout out, make sure you follow me over on Instagram. It is xxlaxaria. And over there, I post travel and fashion content. Mars. As always, my loves, I want to say a massive thank you to my top tier Patreons. Alex Ewart, Official, Orkos Samoji, Ari Adia X, Becky Johnson, Beebles32, Cameron Pittman, Shell Herman, Christina Kyle, ContraPoints, Elizabeth Stone, Emily Worsham, Eric Castillo, Finch Dunham, Hannah Ruth, Jen Martin, Caitlin Wright, Larissa Says Relax, Leanne Jones, Les Banana, Min Min TM, Mariah Sherman, Miss Kiss, Novembrix, Paula Rivera, Ryan Loves Rory, Steph Utah, Taylor Martin and Vicky Walsh. And you know what, my lovelies? I'm gonna leave it on the notes of I'm not gonna be conscripted. No, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>